So the conventional uh, automotive steels which were actually used in couple of uh, um, uh, decades earlier which were uh, already you know uh, they were getting replaced with the, the advanced ice and seals which were looking at the last uh, unit. So now we look at uh, the some of the introduction, um, uh, basic introduction about these conventional steels and we were looking at and say for example the IF steels, the IFHS, the mild steel, uh, the Baconding steel and common manganese, HSLA and ferritic magnetic steels. And if you recall my previous lecture, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the majority of the conventional steels if you look at it you know uh, they were all um, uh, low carbon uh, steels. Uh, which have uh, uh, excellent ductility. If you look at it, for example, IF steel, the, the percentage of elongation is about uh, say 40 to 50 percent. Uh, and uh, these steels, you know, they, uh, they were easy to uh, produce as well as, you know, uh, because of the uh, high uh, uh, elongation, uniform elongation with uh, uh, very low stress uh, uh, to de uh, uh, yield. These steels were conventionally used uh, in automotive industries in, in a large amount. Uh, if you look at uh, the actual uh, the microstructure, they are very simple, either ferritic microstructures or ferritic uh, pelletic microstructures. Um, say for example, the IF steel uh, is known as you know, interstitial free steel. See these steels, uh, um, uh, the process excellent ductility, so about 40 to 50 percent ductility. So this is actually uh, uh, coming from uh, uh, the fact that you know, the carbon concentration of these steels is extremely low uh, within few ppm carbon concentration we had. Uh, the carbon atoms which are adding, uh, which are added in, in, uh, in iron uh, matrix, uh, generally you know they occupy the interstitial positions the in between the um, iron atoms. Um, but we, we add another uh, some special alloying elements to pin the uh, carbon atoms uh, from uh, uh, the uh, from interstitial uh, positions uh, by adding uh, say for example uh, vanadium or uh, niobium or titanium to the steels and uh, these elements which are added uh, vanadium, niobium, titanium and few uh, uh, ppm uh, amount and these vanadium, niobium, titanium they combine with the carbon atoms and form uh, carbides of vanadium, niobium, titanium. So by forming carbides, we deplete uh, the ion matrix uh, free of interstitial atoms. So the, the carbon actually is taken out from the interstitial positions um, by these elements to form uh, vanadium carbide, niobium carbide, titanium carbide. Um, because of this carbide formation, we are uh, uh, now having a uh, pure uh, ferrite matrix. So because of uh, the pure ferritic microstructures and these steel have excellent ductility. If you look at it in this uh, banana diagram, the IF steel has uh, the maximum uh, in uniform elongation uh, about 40 to 50 percent. So this steel uh, it is uh, it's very attractive uh, uh, in, uh, in early uh, say late 90s uh, when, they, when the automotive industries they were trying to uh, get uh, steels that can be easily formed uh, during uh, 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 while making uh, components for um, auto bodies. So the IF steels, uh, you know, uh, 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 it has been used even now in some of the uh, automotives uh, for uh, low load bearing members, for example, uh, uh, roof or uh, door panels uh, because uh, we can easily form this steel. So again, I mean, uh, the trend uh, uh, went on to, you know, uh, to identify uh, uh, to, uh, the high strength uh, steels. Uh, so uh, these automakers, uh, they wanted to you know, uh, increase the strength of the steel as I have been explaining uh, in earlier uh, slides. Uh, so they started using um, somewhat higher amount of alloying elements uh, such as uh, vanadium, niobium, titanium to form more carbides in the steel so that the strength can be increased slightly higher than the conventional IF steels. So uh, the IF high strength, the interstitial free high strength steel, they possess slightly higher amount of uh, micro alloying additions of niobium, vanadium, titanium. Uh, to have uh, uh, precipitates uh, uh, volume fraction increase in the microstructure, thereby providing uh, pro precipitation hardened. So from IF steel, uh, the, uh, the IF high strength steels were uh, developed uh, by adding a slightly higher amount of vanadium, niobium and titanium and uh, the strength increased from say 200 to about uh, 300 mega Pascal and thereabout. Uh, so, uh, by increasing strength obviously the, um, the, the ductility uh, uh, elongation 
uh, decreased uh, slightly, but still the IFHS is considered uh, uh, better than an IF because we gain a lot of strength improvement and still the ductility is 40 to 40 percent, so which is uh, um, uh, reasonable uh, to use uh, these steels in, uh, in place of uh, the conventional interstitial free steels. Uh, and uh, the, the other type of uh, the conventional steel which is uh, which were commonly used uh, in automotive application um, uh, is uh, an, an simple uh, ferritic paralytic uh, mild steels. Uh, so, these steels were uh, like you know uh, uh, very simple uh, uh, alloying uh, additions uh, and also very uh, yeah, easy to uh, produce with the simple heat treatments because the microstructure is not that complex. So, the mild steels. So, uh, these were all uh, no, classified into deep drawn uh, uh, and drawn deep drawn and extra deep drawn grades D, D, D and EDD D, uh, grades and the containing uh, the uh, ferrite and then perlite microstructures. The perlite volume fractions again dictated by the carbon concentration as already explained in the, uh, in the phase diagram. Uh, based on the carbon concentration you may form some amount of protactite ferrite and uh, remaining uh, would be uh, perlite. So, the, the, these grades uh, they are also you know uh, 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 providing you know excellent uh, elongation as well as uh, uh, reasonable strength uh, comparable to IF, st IF steel, the uh, strength varying from 200 to 250 MA Pascal. And uh, these steels were also you know uh, attractive of automotive uh, applications uh, because of uh, the excellent ductility they offer, uh, 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 because of the excellent ductility and uniform elongation and we can uh, draw it and we can stretch it and we can make components uh, from deep drawn deep, uh, uh, and the extra deep drawn uh, grades. So, the, uh, the other conventional uh, steel uh, no, uh, before the, 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 uh, the, uh, the development of advanced steels, steels, uh, no, the, the one of the steels is uh, the bay corning steels BH. So, this steel also um, uh, contains uh, very low carbon concentrations, uh, carbon concentration in a few um, uh, tens of ppms, the parts per million. Um, and, uh, unlike uh, the IF steel, the Baconding steel does not have a micro alloying additions. So, we deliberately leave carbon in interstitial positions, okay. So, carbon is actually uh, present in the interstitial position for uh, uh, one uh, very uh, important uh, reason. Again, and the, this steel process uh, contains very uh, low carbon and the carbon atoms are uh, kept in the interstitial positions. So, why do we keep that? In IF steels we take it out and form uh, micro lying precipitates. Whereas, in Baconding steel we keep the carbon atoms in the interstitial positions. And why do we uh, keep it? Because uh, these steels uh, if, when you deform it, okay, so uh, you anneal and uh, subsequently uh, when you uh, bake it in a paint baking cycle, okay, so you make a component, uh, you deform it whatever deep drawing or stretching and then uh, you uh, uh, send the component after painting to baking cycle. Uh, so, we all know that you know uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, increasing in uh, strength by the uh, interstitial atoms, uh, by uh, the interstitial carbon atoms that, uh, when you have uh, uh, and driving force the carbon atoms go and segregate to dislocation fronts, okay. So, these carbon atoms when they uh, migrate during the uh, uh, slightly uh, increasing temperature provided by the paint baking cycle, the carbon atoms they go and decorate the dislocations and thereby uh, hindering the motion of dislocations in subsequent forming. So, in the baconding steel we leave the carbon atoms uh, deliberately in interstitial positions. So, these carbon atoms can migrate and then go uh, and uh, occupy the dislocation fronts and uh, forming a, a, a cortical atmosphere. And uh, this happens, uh, uh, this migration of carbon atoms uh, to the dislocation front uh, happens during paint baking cycles because you need some driving force for carbon atoms to migrate and, uh, and occupy the dislocation fronts. So, you have uh, an interstitial carbon uh, be begin with and you make component out of it and uh, uh, after uh, you make the you component by forming uh, you apply paint and then uh, components in for paint baking cycle and during this paint baking cycle the carbon atoms migrate to the dislocation front 
and uh, once the carbon atoms decorate uh, the dislocation of friend, a subsequent uh, deformation become difficult because the de deformation is driven by the mobility of dislocations. Uh, then material gains some strength because you are providing new barrier for dislocation motion. So the, you can form it, uh, the, the material uh, uh, still have uh, reasonable ductility about 30 percent elongation and you form the component but after forming and uh, during paint baking cycle because of the migration of carbon atoms to dislocation friends, the component gains slightly higher strength than uh, in, uh, without paint baking. So the strength regaining and it can go up to say about 30 to uh, 60 ma Pascal which is uh, considered at that time uh, very good because uh, yeah, the, the, the base material have a uh, materials containing the strength of 250 ma Pascal. After paint baking cycle you gain about 30 to 60 ma Pascal strength. So yeah, it is uh, uh, yeah, useful especially in a, because all the automotive components uh, are also painted and then baked. Mm -hmm. So we make, um, we take the advantage of uh, the um, carbon migration dislocation front to increase the strength and subsequently. So these, uh, the steels like in IF, IFHS and Baconning steels and mild steels, um, they were all uh, um, considered now the conventional steels uh, because they are very simple and uh, they provide very uh, good uh, formability. So the automakers found it you know, you know, very useful because they can form the components uh, with, an, uh, uh, with the easy mill loads, uh, uh, easy uh, uh, because of uh, high elongations uh, these materials can also be uh, made into various components in automotive uh, parts. But as I already explained, uh, uh, because of uh, uh, the increased uh, uh, the norms of uh, the fuel uh, efficiency as well as safety form form performance, uh, the automakers they found that these steels you know um, cannot meet the uh, emission standards that were actually coming up in you know, over the years. Uh, in order to meet those standards, um, uh, as I already explained, uh, the auto auto uh, parts uh, should be you know, made into lighter and stronger. So uh, again, you know, uh, if you want to make um, uh, the auto parts lighter and stronger, we will have to go for high strength steels, right. So the options which were available uh, for uh, uh, automakers in, uh, in late 90s for, uh, for the steels uh, which are actually in a, with an increased amount of alloying elements, for example, carbon manganese and chromium and silicon added steels and high strength low alloyed steels and uh, some extra ferritic bionetic steels, okay. So these are all again the, the simple uh, uh, microstructure uh, ferritic pelletic containing steels uh, uh, with slightly higher amount of manganese chromium which can uh, provide uh, the substitutional uh, solid solution strengthening and uh, because of uh, these strengthenings uh, of alloying elements uh, the strength increase to um, uh, higher than the higher levels than the conventional uh, the IF, IFHS and BS steels. And because of the simple microstructures of ferritic pelletic uh, or ferritic bionetic, the ductility uh, uh, decreased uh, significantly. So uh, for example, uh, uh, for uh, in a simple carbon manganese ferritic uh, pelletic steels, the strength level in, went up to 500 to 600 ma Pascal. But uh, with uh, in a drop, um, uh, uh, yeah, had, uh, drop in uh, elongation compared to the IF steels. So the formability became uh, a big issue for these steels. If you uh, want to make an, uh, an, uh, 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 deep drawn components uh, uh, or uh, you know uh, components requiring uh, an extensive uh, deformation while during processing, uh, these steels you know they, uh, they did not give enough uh, ductility uh, in, uh, during, form, uh, during farming operations. So people wanted to invent a new microstructures uh, which can give, provide both uh, strength and ductility. So the automakers uh, uh, demanded the steels you know, should possess a significant uh, ductility, you know, not as compared to you know, as, as good as the IF steel, but reasonable ductility. But the strength level should also be increased so that you know, these steels, uh, the conventional steels, IF, IFHS, BH can be replaced with uh, uh, even mild steels can be replaced with uh, high strength steels. 
but by doing so uh, these steels should also uh, be able to formed into various parts. So the driving force now uh, for developing uh, the advanced sites and steels is actually you know, you know, coming from uh, the fact that the high strength ferritic pelletic steels uh, do not have enough ductility and uh, f um, with the given strength of HSLA we would not gain any uh, advantage in terms of manufacturability because um, of uh, uh, reduced uh, elongation ductility. So yeah the, then a uh, lot of research went into to uh, yeah, develop new microstructures um, uh, with an ad, uh, with an a objective of developing steels uh, which actually lies diagonally to this uh, uh, graph. So we need to have a reasonable strength as well as uh, acceptable ductility. Okay. Uh, so in order to do that, you know, as I already explained, the conventional ferritic pelletic microstructure um, uh, cannot meet the both uh, the acceptable ductility and strength combinations. So uh, we, uh, the steel makers uh, they were already you know um, using uh, uh, various uh, uh, microstructure combinations uh, to obtain uh, the strength and ductility uh, uh, which is required to uh, make the automotive components. Uh, the first development happened in this line is to uh, develop microstructures uh, containing uh, two phases, uh, dual phase steel. where uh, the dual phase uh, here uh, denotes uh, the, the ferrite and martensitic microstructures. Okay. So we form uh, uh, a microstructure containing a ferrite and martensite. It is already explained the martensite actually forms from the austenite when you rapidly cool to room temperature uh, and uh, um, by uh, a, a diffusionless manner or displacive uh, manner and the martensite uh, also provides a very high strength compared to the ferrite and uh, during this process of martensite formation and uh, there is also considerable increasing volume uh, in, in terms of uh, the expanding the crystal structure when uh, the FCC transformed to uh, body center tetragonal. And uh, we can make use of uh, the, uh, the advantage of uh, the properties of martensite in terms of mechanical properties and uh, the volume expansion that actually happens uh, when the martensite forms uh, in, uh, in austenite or uh, uh, surrounding uh, ferrite matrix. And uh, we, uh, yeah, we, in subsequent slides we will see you know what uh, to advantage this microstructure is going to bring. But as of now um, uh, you can understand that uh, the DP steels, dual phase steels can have uh, uh, reductility ranging from say 30 percent and the strength uh, can be increased uh, up to uh, the 1200 to 1400 map Pascal. So range of uh, properties can be obtained by changing the, uh, the morphology and the volume fraction of um, the ferrite and martensite mixture. And we will see in detail uh, the actual uh, the formation mechanism and why uh, dual phase steel uh, can give you uh, the elongation uh, as good as uh, the uh, baconding steels and strength which can go uh, uh, more than uh, 1 giga Pascal. Okay. And uh, this became very attractive because now we have uh, a material uh, with uh, very high strength and acceptable ductility and uh, we can reduce the now thickness of uh, the conventional steels uh, to achieve the light weighting. And uh, yeah, by increasing strength, you know, we are not uh, reducing the ease of forming or formability because uh, dual phase steel can also give uh, uh, very good uh, uh, form of forming uh, formability. And apart from uh, dual phase steels, uh, you know, there are uh, two other uh, steels uh, which require uh, uh, yeah, a complex microstructure to, uh, uh, to achieve uh, the strength and ductility combinations. The one such is strip steel. So what is trip steel? Trip here uh, stands for transmission induced plasticity steel. Transmission induced plasticity steels. I will come back to the, uh, the explanation of what is transmission induced plasticity in subsequent slides. So right now uh, um, you can uh, uh, 
uh, understand that the trip steel has a multiphase microstructure containing ferrite, uh, bainite, so you can say bainite and some amount of retained austenite. Okay. And uh, yeah, because of this special multiphase microstructure and trip steel uh, again uh, has excellent, excellent uh, ductility uh, as well as uh, good amount of uh, strength. Um, so do not obtain such a mic multiphase microstructure and we also need to have uh, uh, special heat treatments, underlying elements. Uh, but because of this multiphase microstructure, especially the presence of retained austenite, uh, we can uh, achieve a, a reasonable ductility and strength. Um, so the uh, the another uh, steel in this class uh, this is a complex phase. The complex phase steel is similar to DL phase steel. And uh, these three steels and DP uh, complex phase and trip steel, uh, they actually uh, fall um, in uh, uh, first generation advanced phase and steels. Uh, because uh, these steels, uh, uh, they were the, the first one to be commercialized and uh, some amount of trip steel and uh, dual phase steels very widely used nowadays in automobile bodies. And uh, the strength level uh, uh, varied from uh, close to 500 to uh, 1000 map pascal. So these steels, uh, no, uh, they started uh, uh, coming to commercial uh, applications uh, in early 2000 or so. Uh, and uh, they provided uh, uh, much needed uh, uh, light weighting uh, possibilities because of uh, the increasing strength the steel process as well as uh, uh, the ductility uh, which is needed uh, to form the components of uh, uh, the auto parts. And if you look at uh, the uh, apart from these three uh, micro uh, the steels, uh, uh, this diagram also shows various the, uh, the next generation um, seals, for example, uh, the first and second generation uh, is mainly a trip DP and CP with the strength up to 1000 mah Pascal. And we are actually moving from uh, the, the first and second generation uh, to achieve a diagonal growth. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, the steels with uh, um, modified uh, uh, DP uh, dual phase steels. And so we also have uh, various quench and partitioning um, uh, steels as well as uh, uh, twip steel. And twip steel, uh, 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 it is still not uh, commercially uh, used, but this uh, gives a great uh, um, uh, potential for uh, weight saving applications. But there are some limitations in terms of allowing elements. So we are not going to really look at because it is not really commercially applicable. Twip stands for twin induced plasticity, plasticity steels. And apart from uh, uh, the steels which possess a very good strength and ductility, so you also have uh, one generation of steel which is now becoming um, very interesting uh, for a commercial application is uh, boron containing um, art forming steels. Again the art forming steels, if you look at the compositions, HF stands for art forming steels. In art forming steels, uh, uh, the uh, composition is similar to uh, uh, ferritic paleolithic um, and the, uh, the carbon manganese steels what you see over here. But the forming mechanism, the, the how you make parts out of these steels is different and slightly uh, adding uh, 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 the small amount of boron and we can increase the hardenability significantly. So you, you form the uh, steels at high temperatures and subsequently you cool it to uh, room temperature. During cooling process, uh, the entire microstructure becomes martensitic. So you begin with a ferritic paleolithic microstructure, you take it to austenitic temperature and deform it at austenitic temperature and then subsequently cool to room temperature. And during this cooling process, after you make the components, the components microstructure becomes completely martensitic. Thereby, uh, the strength of the component is in, uh, increased to um, uh, close to uh, 1500 mah Pascal uh, ETS. So we will see in detail uh, in subsequent slides the actual physical metallurgy of uh, dual phase steels and trip steels and the hot forming steels. 
and how we can achieve that uh, uh, the, this excellent uh, uh, combination of uh, microstructures which can give you know, both strength and ductility as well as you know how we can achieve uh, martensitic, fully martensitic microstructure from a uh, ferritic paleolithic uh, uh, microstructure upon uh, forming, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, apart from that if you look at it this great some of the steels like um, the fully austenitic and annual steels these are very expensive in terms of uh, uh, alloying elements because in order to form austenitic complete austenitic microstructure you may need to have to add uh, nickel uh, and uh, chromium. So, uh, yeah, so we are not going to really uh, look at uh, the in detail the austenitic stainless steels and again I said explain fifth steels uh, now they are in under development uh, this steel also contains a high amount of manganese in order to form a twinned microstructure and availability of this steel is uh, uh, still uh, uh, considered very poor if you use the conventional um, uh, welding processes. So, uh, we will also not be looking at uh, these two steels. So, in we will look at in uh, subsequent classes uh, uh, the physical metallurgy of uh, this first and second generation advanced ASN steels and uh, the, the, uh, the hard forming and complete martensitic uh, steels uh, um, which have uh, very high strength upon forming. So, to, in order to summarize uh, this uh, graph, uh, so uh, the automakers uh, and the steel makers they are going for diagonal growth uh, uh, of uh, steel development where steel contains both uh, 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 high strength as well as acceptable ductility. Uh, because of the light weighting uh, uh, and the, the conventional steels are all getting replaced with these advanced size and steels. Uh, in order to achieve uh, uh, better uh, mileage as well as the cross performance uh, uh, driven by the increasing strength, okay. So, this graph shows the, um, the, the um, use of advanced heights and steels and ultra heights and steels. Again ultra heights and steels nothing but uh, steel uh, generally contains uh, UTS of more than 1 giga Pascal. Uh, this is the trend uh, uh, of usage of advanced heights and steels in, in auto bodies. So, this is an y axis we see in 8 pounds per vehicle and over the years uh, if you look at in 2012 the total uh, uh, amount of um, weight of steel that is actually advanced size and steel use about 205, but it is actually in continuously increasing. So, it is already about 330 pounds and it is expected to go uh, close to 480 pounds by 2025 in order to meet the emission norms which I already showed in, uh, uh, in my previous uh, slides to uh, for example, if you want to meet uh, Euro uh, bar 6 norms and we will have to wait, uh, reduce the weight of the car significantly. Uh, so, as I will explained uh, unless uh, the conventional mild steels are replaced with lightweight uh, uh, steels or any other alloys, uh, we cannot achieve the emission norms. So, therefore, uh, the more and more um, uh, advanced usage of advanced size and seal is foreseen over the years. So, uh, this is the forecast right now what, what we are in so for compared to 2012 and it is going to go up because of the stringent emission norms is going to come uh, over the years. And uh, this slide uh, actually shows uh, again the comparison between the various materials used in, uh, uh, in auto bodies. So, comparing 2007 and 2015 if you look at it as I actually explained the ferritic paleolithic steels, the mild steels uh, occupied the majority of uh, auto bodies about 55 percent as I showed. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, compared to 2017 if you look at 2015 uh, the majority of mild steels are all replaced with um, advanced size and steels mainly a dual phase and uh, uh, trip um, or complex phase uh, microstructures. Um, and as well as the conventional ice and steels uh, which are uh, yeah, carbon manganese uh, uh, or ferritic magnetic steels in some applications. So, you already see uh, over uh, 7 years or so in um, uh, last decades the, the majority of mild steels are all replaced with um, advanced ice and steels the use of mild steel is significantly reduced and uh, um, you still have uh, for uh, uh, low load bearing structures uh, bake on noble and um, the uh, interstitial free IF steels. Uh, interstitial free high strength steels um, and uh, if you see uh, and the trend now is the use of advanced high strength steels keep on increasing. Uh, uh, the main uh, uh, beneficiary in terms of weight saving uh, is uh, uh, the mild steel, the mild steels are all uh, getting replaced with uh, an advanced high strength steels. 
So, uh, we will go in detail about uh, the mechanical properties and microstructure of these steels. So, why uh, again uh, uh, the trip and DP steels uh, of uh, first generation, they were very attractive in terms of uh, uh, mechanical properties uh, is shown in this slide. So, this is a simple uh, tensile uh, uh, testing result of um, uh, um, HSLA and trip and DP steels. So, HSLA is, is high strength low alloy um, steels. So, if you look at uh, uh, steels all these three, TRIP, and DP and HSLA, the yield strength is similar, right. But if you look at the actual graph, uh, the uh, for a given uh, yield strength, the all these three, three possess the yield strength of 350 MPa. Pascal. But if you look at the curve of HSLA, TRIP and DP, uh, even though all these three still have uh, uh, equivalent uh, yield stress, the ultimate strength cell strength of uh, deep in trip is much higher than the uh, HSLA steels. Apart from the increasing the ultimate strength cell strength and the trip and TP also gives excellent uniform elongation, okay. You see that the elongation percentage increase significantly as well as uh, the other important point over here in the HSLA steel they saw yield point phenomena, right. So, so this is considered uh, not uh, acceptable uh, or uh, it is not considered beneficial uh, especially if the, if the material is uh, formed uh, deep drawn or stretched you know, to make outer components because you will end up forming what you call a lotus band. So, lotus band formation uh, significantly affect the surface appearance of the uh, components that are stretched or that are formed. Uh, so, apart from the uh, advantage of uh, uh, increased uniform elongation, the DP and trip steel, they also give uh, uh, deformation without the yield point phenomena, okay. So, 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 the advantage in terms of increasing strength in UTS ultimate central strength as well as the uh, uh, total uniform elongation which is increased significantly. Uh, the DP and trips were uh, considered uh, very attractive to replace the conventional high strength and uh, conventional ferritic pelletic steels, okay. So, we like to summarize uh, here. Uh, so, we uh, looked at uh, the various uh, uh, modern uh, advanced size and steels, uh, how these steels uh, were uh, found to be you know, attractive um, compared to the conventionally used ferritic pelletic or a simple uh, pure ferritic based um, steels. And uh, we also looked at uh, the steels uh, um, that are getting developed for example, uh, trip steel or austenitic stainless steels. And why we need to have a diagonal growth uh, in elongation and uh, in terms of elongation as well as uh, the strength uh, in the material. Uh, and we also looked at uh, uh, the trend in the usage of commercial uh, uh, applications of uh, usage and commercial application of advanced size and steels over the years. So, so, it is going to go increase uh, because to meet the emission norms. Uh, so, uh, the conventionally used mild steels are all replaced with uh, uh, the advanced size and steels. Mm, so, about 50 uh, percent of mild steels which are used in um, uh, late 90s are all replaced uh, 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 with advanced size and steels. And uh, yeah, we, we are going to uh, go even further. And the the, uh, the properties of uh, trip and DP steels, you know, they are superior to the HSLA steel in terms of uh, uh, uniform elongation as well as uh, the increasing yield stress, uh, the um, ultimate end cell stress for a given yield stress. And apart from the um, strength and uh, the elongation uh, advantage, and DP and trip steel, they also do not show yield point phenomena. So, uh, the surface appearance and so of the components that are formed. Uh, they are also better than the HSLA steels.